Now, some people are really comfortable in front of the camera and they come across as really natural and engaging. But that's a bit of an X factor. It's not something you can necessarily teach because some people just have it. It's amazing how often we hear that John from Accounts is really, he's an extrovert, he's really bubbly and lively, and he'll be great in this video. And then he turns up, he sits down, he's faced with a camera and with lights and with a microphone, and there's three or four crew members behind the camera and there's his boss in the corner watching as well. And suddenly it's not so easy. And often people get to that point and they don't do a great job. Whereas someone else who you might least expect sits in front of the camera and they honestly just don't give a shit about what's going on around them and they deliver a, an amazing and natural performance. Now I'm not gonna go into a whole media training thing here, but a couple of things that I think are really important and which a lot of people make the mistake of doing are some of the following. Firstly, I highly recommend you don't script what you're going to say. If you start scripting it word for word, then suddenly you need to A, remember your script, which is hard enough, unless you're a professional actor, to deliver it in some sort of convincing and natural way, which is still really difficult because you're generally searching for the words, you're trying to remember what you wrote. Even worse is if someone else wrote the script for you and you're trying to remember somebody else's words. It just very, very rarely comes out in a natural and engaging way. Often people will walk into the room and they've created their own cue cards. And they say, yeah, I've written a script and we'll just use these cue cards. We'll, we'll stick them next to the camera or someone will hold them up for me and, and we'll get through it that way. That's not a great idea either because again, you're gonna be glancing from the camera lens to your words and back again, or if you're being interviewed, you'll be glancing from the interviewer down to the cue cards. And it just, again, doesn't work. It's not natural. It sounds like you're reading. It's a skill to make it sound like you're not reading. So it's, again, not something we would recommend. And then of course, there's the option of using an auto cue or a teleprompter, and they can be very useful in some circumstances. But uh, most of the time, people sound like they're reading unless they're really used to using them. So what I'd recommend instead for the person who's gonna be sitting in front of the camera is to provide them with some talking points. You say to them, okay, we wanna cover A, B, C, and D. Have a think about them. Don't script it. Just think about those topics and talk about it naturally. Because after all, you've chosen a person to appear on camera because they're the subject matter expert. If you've got someone from marketing to talk about last year's campaign that was really successful, they know about it. They're the experts. So they can talk about it naturally, completely naturally. All you need to do is provide them with a couple of prompts, a couple of questions from off camera and get them to talk about it. Now, people's comfort in front of the camera varies, as I said earlier, but it's very rare that we would film an interview or a piece to camera and not have multiple takes. There's always multiple takes. No matter how good people appear, on camera, there's multiple takes, they've, they've stumbled occasionally, we've reshot, but we've edited our way around it. Uh, this piece I'm doing here, I, I don't know how many um, cuts I'm gonna have to use, um, but I can assure you I've already done multiple versions of everything I've said so far. And there's various things that we do from a technical point of view that allow us to get out of jail, if you like, during the edit. Uh, that is shooting in 4K so we can crop into a closer shot shooting some cutaways of the subject's hands, for example, or something else that they're referring to, as well as shooting some B-roll or some overlay footage around the office of them working or talking to their colleagues. So don't stress if you're in front of the camera and you are not getting it right the first time because nobody does. Actors don't get it right the first time. Professional presenters don't get it right the first time. Now, obviously I don't wanna show you any examples of, of poor performances in front of the camera, but I'll show you a couple of good examples. Now, these admittedly are some examples where people have that X factor, where they really felt comfortable in front of the camera and they are able to deliver their message in a really natural and engaging way. Your vision for uh, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries is just amazing and I just, love being on that trip with you both. Because we, we aren't walled in like, like medium and high security prisons, it's, it's, it's extremely important that we interact with our prisoners, regular perambulation, patrols. But other than the fact that they just feel naturally comfortable, is the fact that they're just talking about a topic that they know. That's all they're doing. They're not trying to remember a script. They're talking about something that they're an expert in. And the expectations that I have on my senior consultants is for them to really step up with the field work and manage the delivery of it, manage the quality of it. And that comes across. 
in their delivery. They're just being themselves. This isn't intended to be media training. This is just a few little hints about how to feel more comfortable in front of the camera and therefore give a more genuine performance. So don't script it, don't use cue cards, don't have notes on your lap. Just talk about the content that you're the expert in. And that way it'll come across really naturally and really genuinely and it will be a much more engaging video.